Hey everyone, it's Andrew. In this video, I'm going to be going over how you can bring contacts into high level by using inbound webhooks through workflows. This is a really valuable thing to know, especially if you're using external systems, maybe payment providers, QR codes, forms and surveys, things like that, that are outside of high level. So let me show you exactly how this works. Now this is a premium action, be aware, but what we're going to do is going to add this trigger. I'm going to walk you through all the different parts of these triggers. So it seems a little bit less daunting to the average Joe that's never used webhooks before. Now, when you immediately look at your trigger, you're going to see a couple of things. First thing we're going to see, obviously just our title right here, which we can change to whatever we want, but right underneath that, we're going to see our URL, which says post get put what on earth is this? All right. So this is our URL where we are essentially using to capture information from what other system is sending the information out. There's essentially two parts to this. There is the sender and there's the receiver. This is the receiver side of things. So whatever the external system you're using, that's going to be sending this information out is going to be the sender. And I'll show you exactly what that code looks like in a second. And this URL is where we are going to be receiving that information from. Now, what is post get and put these three different types of web hooks are the three different methods for receiving this information. A post is sending out information that needs to be just thrown up. Get is like putting out a request to receive information and to pull it from another source. And put is putting information into a place where the information already is there. So think about updating existing information. Now in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about adding contact into high level through whatever system you're using that has those webhooks. So let's keep it simple with a post. Now you might be thinking you have this URL right here, we can copy it, but what exactly are we going to use this for? Well, this is where our external system is going to come into play. I'm going to be using Postman, which is API testing network that you can use to test these sorts of things. But for you in your case, if you're using Google Sheets, maybe Zapier, maybe a payment processor or anything like that, you can find their webhooks within that system itself and you can create what's called an HTTP request. This is the information we're trying to get from the system. We're just going to do a simple post and we'll see under body. This is the information that we are sending out through this webhook. We have name and it is Andrew Testa process. If we want to add in additional information, we can add another line. Let's say it is phone. Keep in mind the first thing that you're going to type here, that's going to be the name and then we're going to do space colon and then another thing within quotation marks that is going to be the value itself. So if we add phone, we can add one, two, three. There we go. Now we have name and phone. Those are both going to be sent via this HTTP request. Now for your request, I would follow this type of format for the body. And then what this is going to do is essentially send this information from whatever system we're in. Imagine this system is something like we said, a payment processor, maybe Zapier, maybe a form. And then we are going to use that URL that we had from the inbound webhook action. And we are going to put it into this URL section at the top. You will have this section in whatever system you're using, whether it's Zapier or payment processor or QR code or whatever you're actually using. But if you're using something like Postman, then this is where you're going to put that information. Then when we officially run this code and click send. So back in our workflow, we can see under our references, we will see that request show up the mapping reference section. We'll be able to see all the code that comes through and at the top we'll see that name and phone number that's the information coming from our external system and being imported into our workflow via this inbound webhook and once we've tested this and we know that our name and phone number or whatever contact information we're using is being imported through this inbound webhook then we can click save trigger and it's going to move us on to our next step it's going to automatically create a contact and then we need to actually associate contact fields with those inbound webhook fields as you can see, there was a lot of information coming in through this big section of code. So how do we tell high level which sections to take? Well, we're going to go over that in this create contact step. We're going to add our fields. If you select field and then let's say we're going to update the first name field with that name field, then right here we will see our custom value under inbound webhook trigger. And then we will see all the different information that's here. So that headers, that's going to be all the extra code that we're not using. Don't worry about that. But name, that is the one that we created and we can throw that in just like that. And then we can add another field for phone and then associate it with that inbound webhook trigger again under phone and then click save action. So just like that, we've got an inbound webhook trigger coming from an external system that's sending information to that URL that we have within this webhook. And now that we've tested it, we know that sending that information into this create contact action, we can save it and publish it. And now we can use this within our other systems as an inbound webhook in order to connect different systems up. Now there is a ton of different use cases for using webhooks, mainly because webhooks basically run the internet when it comes to sending information across systems. But the big thing that you need to know is that this is going to help you get any information from any system that's not integrated with high level 
into high level by using this bit of code and by using this inbound web host. So there's really a million use cases that you could go over with this. So I would highly recommend whenever you're going to use a system, whether it's Zapier, Google Sheets, a payment processor, a form, a QR code, anything that's outside of high level, just do a little bit of research and make sure you are setting up that sending side of it for the webhook correctly. If you would like to test this out, I'd highly recommend you use Postman. It's a completely free system and it makes it really easy for setting up your own webhooks and getting familiar with how to create your own JSON code and send information to high level using these inbound webhooks. I hope this made inbound webhooks a little bit easier to understand and less daunting for you. But if you have any questions, feel free to refer to the help doc. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. Thanks.